two, three. What's the matter? Scared of <laughs> Right? There's this weird modern image of Lucifer as this kind of misunderstood anti-hero. A handsome, chain-smoking bad boy with fiery rings, daddy issues, and a 16-pack that can cut glass. This is often justified with the explanation that Lucifer Morningstar was a solid 10, and when he fell from heaven, he retained his good looks and charm. But the seductive bad boy persona is actually not his traditional representation. The medieval manuscripts paint Satan as less of a prince of darkness and more like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, both interpretations have literary merit. Sexy Satan has the benefit of being someone you could see yourself selling your soul to, while ugly Satan makes more sense conceptually, since if he was going to be spending eternity trying to seduce humanity to the dark side, it would make sense for God to not make it unnecessarily easy on him by making him not so easy on the eyes. So the question remains, where did the idea of sexy Satan come from? Yes, I know the first answer is the internet, in which literally everything is reimagined to be sexy, but this interpretation actually dates back to the time before the internet. So what did it? The answer, like the answer to so many other literary questions, is that somebody wrote a critically acclaimed piece of revisionist fanfiction about it. In this case, a little ditty known as Paradise Lost. Now, Paradise Lost is weird for a variety of reasons, not the least of which being that someone looked at this and somehow saw this. But a more important way, and this is one that's easily overlooked by modern audiences, namely that this poem was originally written in English, and that it was about God. Okay, let me clarify that statement. Basically, Paradise Lost was an epic poem written at a time when the thought of writing an epic poem on anything but the Greco-Roman pantheons was pretty much unthinkable, let alone writing it in a garbagey commoner language like English. And on top of that, to complete his... Uh, I don't know, inverse blasphemy? Milton began his poem by invoking a muse in traditional epic poetry fashion, but rather than pollute his nice biblical epic poem with the actual Greek muses, he instead went straight to the top and invoked the Holy Ghost himself to serve as the inspiration to this charming vignette. That's right, much like his protagonist, Milton was breaking all the rules. So our story begins, unsurprisingly, in hell, shortly after Sexy Satan and his pals were cast out of heaven. There's a more detailed explanation later, but the short of it is Sexy Satan called out God in front of all of his friends, there was a big old war in heaven, and Satan and his friends unsurprisingly lost. Now this is played like a fallen hero confronting a tyrannical ruler and being brutally crushed, but seeing as the POV character is, you know, Satan, that perspective should probably be taken with a grain of salt. This speech is absurd. <laughs> same literary universe. 
For a lovely subversion of this trope, read anything written by Neil Gaiman ever. Because this is one of those books about God with a capital G, I'm afraid our old Greek friends have been rewritten as demons in order to reconcile their existence with the big man upstairs. So anyway, the fallen angels make themselves a big shiny conference hall called Pandemonium and start debating how best to mess with God. Now, sexy Satan has heard through the grapevine that God's fixing to make a new world, populated by some new creatures who God would favor just as much, if not more, than the angels. And this, by the way, is where Daddy Issues Satan first originates. Anyway, yeah, new world, new losers. Satan decides the best way to screw with God is to do to these new beloved creatures what God did to him and his friends. Make them sin and thus fall. Yeah, not so beloved now, are ya? Why should you be good enough for him when I wasn't? You can't even fly! Daddy issues. So Satan sets about breaking out of hell so as to wreak havoc on God's new kids. This is complicated slightly by the fact that the gates of hell are guarded by Satan's daughter, Sin, and his son slash grandson, really don't ask, it's gross, death. So Sin's like, yeah, I'm not opening the gate, gate. God said not, not to. And Satan's like, oh yeah? Well, is God your real dad? I didn't think so. And Sin's like, you, you make, make a fantastic point. And opens the gate for him. So sexy Satan scoots heavenward through chaos, which is apparently where hell is, but that's not important right now, because smash cut to God, chilling up in heaven with his favorite son. So God apparently knows that Satan is gonna tempt him humanity to fall, and he's totally cool with it. But it is going to complicate matters with regards to humanity being able to enter heaven. So God decides to give everyone a conscience to help guide them in the right direction. But Jesus is like, Hey Dad, it's great and all that humanity is going to have a guiding conscience to keep them from sinning, but what about original sin? That's not something they can get rid of, and with it, nobody's going to be able to enter heaven. And God's like, Gee, you're right. If only had someone to be willing to incarnate and die really painfully in order to cleanse humanity of their sins. So, can I get a volunteer from the audience? Jesus, the boy? So Jesus agrees, and God explains that Jesus will incarnate, die really painfully, defeat Satan and death itself, initiate the rapture, seal off hell, and become the sole ruler of the universe. Not necessarily in that order. Anyway, back to our nominal hero Satan, who's popped out into the solar system and encountered Uriel, the angel of light, who's hanging out on the sun, presumably for thematic appropriateness. So Satan disguises himself as a cherub, probably the more non-threatening version, and innocently asks Uriel which planet God's been building Eden on, since he really wants to get a little peek. Uriel points him Edenward, and Satan touches down in paradise. Now this is where Satan abruptly lapses into brooding self-pity, pondering how the truth True hell is the misery he brings with him. Wow, you know, that sounds like a much easier problem to solve than actually being in hell. Have you considered yoga? So Sexy Satan 